Hello and welcome back. So let's export this model into the Abacus. And one thing you will notice that how fast it is in exporting to uh, Ansys. Uh, sorry, to Abacus. Whereas Ansys take, takes much time in exporting, even if it, it is a small part. But let's start doing it. Like one thing that you should be very careful when using Abacus is the units. So because my model was in millimeters, so I'm gonna use millimeters over here as well. And that's megapascal and then 0 0.3. I think it's two two thousand and two hundred and ten and then thousand, right? Okay, good. Now there are these things are a lot easier in Ansys because they are automatically there for you but in Abacus you have to do all of these steps yourself and especially the assembly and let's see so just like we did it and in Abacus Ansys we won't be able to do the same thing in Ansys like using this phase for rotation and selecting it as the point or uh, displacements or rotations so we would have to define a reference point in the center of this gear and then we would have to couple everything to that point and then we would have to apply the boundary conditions to that point rather than this phase so let's create the phase first but did we apply the properties yes we did so let's go to the part and uh, but before we create a reference point we need to know where we're gonna put it so let's select these two points and we're gonna use it in between these two so it's 40 point something and then should be like zero zero so I would create a reference point at zero and zero now we have a reference point in center and the same thing goes for the second one so we have a reference point but before that let's check what's the distance between these two okay that's zero zero and then zero that makes that that makes it easier for the input now we have to create the constraints coupling and this reference point and then slave is this surface but I don't want to put it be here yet um, because and the reason is that unlike the ANSYS we cannot use the face meshing in it and we would have to either use the edges or the, the global seeds so I'm just gonna and now we can mesh it in assembly rather than the parts so let's select these edges and hit enter now we're going, we want to do 0.2 and to enter it would create a mesh with everything else as the same size that we don't want so we select everything else and And we hit like and we give it like four millimeter size. And there is another thing we want to do is we want to use select these faces or edges and then hit apply. And they, yeah, that's fine. Or maybe I can just make these four divisions and then we hit the meshing. Yeah we get a fairly good mesh and we want to see like if there is something penetrating in e into each other yeah it does now let's see if if that makes our analysis bad or no so we have something penetrating over here as well so let's let's go with it and let's first create the constraints for reference points so we have the coupling, we have the master and slave. Is this point? 
and done and the same thing we have this reference point and then surface and then we hit it yeah so what's left now a constraint and the other thing the boundary conditions and the contact between these two now we can use this tool and it's showing different faces now we can still go with it or I can just use the entire body as a contact and it's not recommended there can be two ways like I, I can do it with this or I can create surfaces and then select these as my my manual contact creation but let's do let's go on with this because it's a little bit more automatic and it would just save us a few clicks but we we're not sure like it, if it would give us good results so now everything else everything in it is the contact so let's let's go on with it for now and then we can change it so this one is fixed everything fixed and the second one we have everything as fixed and we create a step 0.01 um, yes and we change now we should be careful here Z R3 and in R3 we need radians to be now let's calculate how many radians we have in degrees so the other way in, in the answer we use 12 degrees so that's 12 degrees and now we are all set up so we have the part properties and then we have the mesh and we have created interaction we have created these points now let's create the job here and the name would be gear and then I'm gonna use my GPU and six cores so let's submit it and then we can check it so one thing that I like about the Epicus is that while it's running we can still go back and check results and we can see if it it's making any sense or no for example let's see here like we have a little bit of penetration so it, it just removes but we still do have a little bit of gap and the results look exactly the similar way we have in abacus or answers so we have high stress at the point of contact where we have the penetration and then we have the, the, the. but when we should be getting good results it I mean it shows you that the contact is being established and it's being pressurized but we don't see the reciprocal of it on the other side as well so it, it's not correct and there's an there's a gap over here as well it should mesh on it and then it should push on top of it so instead of waiting for it to, to complete I can just kill it and now I can fix it or I could have fixed it before it could finish so I'm gonna hide it and then in the part let's look into the assembly so I'm gonna use these faces as my contact so create so its name would be gear gear and then it would have these faces as gear and I'm gonna un unhide it show and then hide 
this one or I can tell you that never mind so we have a surface we create and then we call it pinion pinion and then we select these faces and make sure that we don't select these front faces as well and now we have the selected these two created as gear and pinion now we need to create an interaction between these two so I suppress this one and I create new one and master surface I, I will select the gear and then slave type I would select the pinion and it would show me like this is my contact now and adjust only to removal closure and then automatically smooth so let's try with this and then maybe it works so now again we can see that the, the results are still the same in magnitude but we can see that the accuracy of the contact is established now let's see the unaffected results to see how the stress is distributed and we can see that when it moves like the corresponding elements they get high stress like as compared to the other ones though but not too high as we should expect for example look at here and uh, here we have high stress over these elements and these elements and at the same time we have contact over here somewhat contact over here and it gets high stress somewhere so now there could be so many reasons for it like for example look at these two elements they are rubbing onto each other and uh, And now these two, these two and these two. So we say that in terms of contact and the FEA and using whatever we used, it's a good result. And but we have to be very careful. For example, the someone some people might think that the stress should be in like 100 or 200 megapascal and it should also be a, too, a, a little bit too high one thing for very low stress could be the speed and the distance between these two and what we discussed here was this one so let me show you what happens when we have a very high rotating a very high speed gears so here we have the same set of gears with the same thing but the only difference is we have very high speed over here so let's see like how does the stress change over one second now look at the stresses so the behavior is same but the magnitude is sky high now it's like 258 megapascal and we can just keep moving on and it's like 197 and 345 so it's it's in like 0.5 seconds and yeah this is just this one but only to show you the comparison like what happens when we have very high stre uh, speed so just make sure you know what you're doing and what kind of results you would get in the end so if you're just as mindless as expecting this kind of results with very low speed then you're doomed for failure just make sure that you know what you're doing when you're doing FEA have a very good luck doing this analysis and happy learning goodbye